we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done Oh, the good times just begun Hey guys, welcome back and get ready for completely undiying our entire house. If you missed my moving update or moving vlog, I'll link those here for you to catch up on, but we had very short notice to undo everything I've done to this house. So join me on this journey, starting in the playroom of undoing all the paint, molding, basically returning the house to how we got it. One of my favorite ways to uh, hang pictures, thumbtacks. I use them all over the house for little things like that wreath. Now I wouldn't get to enjoy these shelves being hung up for terribly long, but I still love that I made them and we'll get to enjoy them in the next house. These bookshelves were the last DIY I did in the house and they were very straightforward, very renter friendly, just command hooks which were super easy to pull off cleanly. Okay, these command hooks are really renter friendly, but you do have to be careful while you remove them. I'm not too concerned because I'm painting this wall anyway, but just like that. Oh, we know what we have. Let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. These were super straightforward, super renter friendly. Maybe if you have older paint or peeling paint, it'll pull paint off, but also that's what touch-up paint's for. So nothing left behind on the wall. Um, sadly, the, the paint that I put on their wall is a little more permanent, so we're gonna have to fix that. I do so much painting that I don't really reach for painter's tape often, but because this baseboard was painted all the way down to the floor, I wanted to protect that and not paint the vinyl floors right before we moved out. So I taped that down, shook up our touch-up paint. I got a very small touch-up paint thing from our leasing office. They wouldn't give me the name of the paint. So I took it to Lowe's, got it color matched. I think I ended up using two gallons total or one and a half gallons and then went to town. Uh, pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna paint a wall. <laughs> you can see here while the paint is still wet, it looks like a different color. And so I was a little nervous. I was gonna have to paint the entire wall, like all the way up to the ceiling, which like would not be the end of the world, just kind of a pain. But you will see a little bit later that I'm gonna uh, um, let it dry after I do two coats of it and it actually turns out perfect like you won't be able to tell the difference between the two wall colors even though they're probably slightly different shades of the same color This lighting is not doing me any favors at this point of the night. Um, first coat of paint is up, and in the meantime, I'm gonna move over to the molding wall. I'm looking straight at it right here, and uh, take care of this. This is a DIY I'm very nervous about because I didn't use command strips to hold it up there. I used mounting tape, and I don't know. I, it was more like semi-permanent mounting tape, not like pull this little thing and it comes out. So we will see how this one fares. funny story about this box we've had this molding up for like two years now basically it was one of the first projects I did and it's actually not the right height I did a little notch at the bottom of the piece of trim and then I put that at the top so if you look closely these were never level and these are really hard to pull off the wall this is rare, and I want to take you there Okay, you can definitely see where each box was, but I think that is 100% on me. When I installed these, I just put the trim on the wall and then painted directly over it. So the lines you see here are just the excess paint. It's just fresh paint on top of old paint, so it like stands out more. So that's on me how you can see the outlines. And this is the mounting tape. I just found an extra roll of it that we had in the garage. This is the exact one that we used for this project. And if you zoom in right here, ideal for paint. I'm gonna have to uh, disagree on that. 
a lot of them came off I don't think any of them came off totally clean and then a lot of them like just split in half and so I'm gonna have to scrape and sand and get these little foam bits off of the wall now I'm also not decided if I'm going to paint the wall look at this little horn I've got growing out I don't know if I'm gonna paint this wall I'm gonna wait for better lighting I'm gonna scrape off the edges and I just don't want to paint another wall for nothing Okay, after spending way too long uh, working on the uh, molding wall, I was able to like peel off with my fingers, like my fingers are just rubbed raw right now, but I was able to peel off all of the foam bits left behind. You can see the graveyard of them on the floor. And it's hard for me to tell how much you can see on camera. It definitely has improved the look and texture of the walls, but you can still clearly see the outlines. This wall is drying nicely. I kind of like feathered up the paint a little bit. Uh, a little bit of a fade kind of and it looks pretty good to me like I can't really tell maybe you can tell on camera I don't know but I'm gonna pull up the painters tape right along the bottom here put all of this back together I was planning on disassembling this toy storage unit tonight but it is almost 10 o'clock which is way past my bedtime I am exhausted so I think I'm gonna just like return this room back to its normal state I'm gonna vacuum clean up put away all the paint trays and all that stuff and then uh just call it a night in this space. Later on, I ended up deciding that I needed to paint all of the molding walls, which is really frustrating, but it's just kind of what I had to do to make sure I didn't have any move out charges. But we're moving on to another day. All of these projects were happening once Maddie was asleep for the night, so like 8 p.m. onward, and we are tackling the half bath downstairs. This was a, another challenging like molding removal process. This molding was a little bit thicker, so it gave you something extra to grab onto. And I also got a really good technique down for removing the extra like a uh, mounting tape so I kind of will say it is renter friendly you just have to like work really hard to get it cleanly off like you can see that I have to go around and like rub off all of the little left behind pieces but it never damaged the walls at all so I'll give it that it's just kind of a pain to remove definitely not as simple as a command hook if I'm gonna love somebody I just wanna love you if I'm gonna love somebody Another little renter thing we did is add this towel rack because it didn't have one by the sink and that was kind of weird. So put this in and pulled out my favorite little spackle tool. It is an all-in-one thing. It has the spackle and a squeeze tube. It has the sander on the cap and a little squeegee. Like it is your all-in-one tool. Perfect for move out. Christian grabbed me like one or two of them. You'll see me do that later. Um, but back to the bathroom project, you can see me going around sanding the edges where the molding was. Just like in the playroom, I painted the molding while it was on the wall. So paint kind of pooled and left behind like ridges and edges. And I knew that if I just painted right over it without doing anything, you'd really clearly see that like something used to be here that is no longer here. And so the sanding helped take a lot of that uh, like grittiness, extra paint buildup down and made it look a lot more smooth. Far from perfect, but definitely better. Now, one thing I was questioning this whole time, because undoing these DIYs was not a fun process, was if it was worth it. And I do think the bathroom was worth it doing this like half wall in there. It was really pretty for me. And then after we had painted it back to the original state, I was just a little disappointed every time I walked in here. Like I thought the old bathroom was so pretty and this one just was so blah. So for me, I'm really glad I did the bathroom project. We can leave and run away. On to our peel and stick counters that I absolutely loved. It was not perfect by any means, but it was such an improvement over our last countertops that I am 100% happy we did this process. You can see it peeled off in pretty big chunks, but we also had a lot of countertops in this kitchen, so it did take us a while to take this off. For some reason, the top island part that Christian's working on right here was the most challenging part to take off. I think it's because I used a hair dryer to really warp it and wrap it around the edges and stuff, and that left behind a little bit of a residue and just made it really hard to pull off. 
Whereas the rest of the kitchen, I just kind of rolled it out. And so kind of a high maintenance project to undo. I think we spent two or three hours undoing all of this. But overall, another project I'm really glad we did. I especially liked it after we undid it all because the kitchen felt so like dull and yellow with these like brownish countertops that I really missed having the bright white countertops, even if they weren't like perfect or super durable. We had a couple nicks and scratches in some and the corners were peeling a little bit, but overall, we're really happy we did this project. The only residue left behind was on this top island part, so I pulled out this Goo Gone and went to town on it. We tried paper towels and then sponges, and the quickest way to take care of this was with a, uh, what's it called? Oh, a steel wool pad. That was what solved that problem. Um, we've also done a bunch of little projects around the house that I don't think I talked about much, like taking down vertical blinds, so I have to put those back. And then the other DIY I did to the kitchen that I really, really, really loved was switching out all of the hardware. I found this pack of like 32 different knobs on Amazon in like a pretty champagne bronze color and swapped them out with like the standard basic silver ones the kitchen came with. So we're returning them back to how they were. Honestly, I don't think the housing would have noticed if I left them, but I paid for them. I want to take them to our next house and maybe use them there. But this was also another touch that just made it a little bit more our house, a little more personal. And so I'm really happy we did this one too. I got you. Hey, you got me too. 2 a.m. in the car playing our favorite song. Turn it up, windows down. We sing along. Some other things we did to prevent extra move out charges was patching any dents or like things in the wall. Bucky never damaged any walls in our house, thankfully, so I don't have to clean up any baseboards or like puppy chew marks or whatever. But we had this dent that thankfully that little spackle kit I talked about earlier was just perfect for. Like I couldn't even tell that there was damage before. We just did a little touch up paint. And then it was time to go to Madeline's room. This was the hardest room for me to take apart. I love this room so much and it's her first room I don't, i'm not going to talk about it too much i don't want to get emotional but this wallpaper literally broke my heart to take down because i loved it so much it's from the company a new wall i will have that link below they were a great company to work with i honestly might just buy the same wallpaper for our next house because i loved it that much also removal was super easy i didn't have any damage left to our wall behind it was just a big ball of trash took less than a minute to tear down um the rest of her room, however, I did that same molding project, so I'm gonna have to pull all of the molding down and then paint all of these walls. <laughs> kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, my mom was here to help out with this whole moving process, so she had Madeline while I painted her room one day, and it wasn't super bad, just kind of annoying. I just really wish that I had pre-painted these molding pieces before putting them on the walls. That would have saved me so much time. Still love the molding. I just wish I had a, did a little more preparation before I put it up. You're right next to me. So alive and tonight I'm thinking that I don't wanna go Now, a lot of my DIYs were repeats in different places in the house, so I won't bore you with the step-by-step -step instructions of how I painted a wall or how I pulled every little piece of molding down. I think I've covered the majority of our projects. I am gonna go back and paint the arch in the guest room, and then we are gonna move over to the master bedroom where I definitely encountered the most issues with that wall molding. I found the mounting tape was pretty forgiving to take off, but it definitely was more challenging to remove from the wall the longer it had been set up. So you see here in the bedroom, I already pulled it off and uh, you can see all the paint tracks I left behind. It was so bad in the bedroom. I went through and scraped off as much as I could, scanned it a ton and just did my best. We didn't get charged for this. No one ever said anything about it, but like you could tell a little bit this was left behind. So if you're going to go forward with the molding, I 100% recommend fully painting the molding pieces before you put them on the wall. Unless you're planning to go through this whole process, it's, it's not fun. I would not recommend that. That's the one thing I would change 
about how I did all of this, but the bedroom molding had been installed for the longest amount of time, and so it definitely was the hardest to peel off. I actually was not strong enough to do it for a lot of the pieces. Christian had to come on and muscle off a lot of them. We did damage the wall in one point and like ripped off a piece of the drywall, so it was, I don't even know what it was beneath it. It's like cardboard. So we spackled over that with our trusty little tool. It looked perfectly normal. Um, also, sorry, the camera was completely out of focus while I painted the bedroom, but I figured it's a nice little background to look at while I tell you just kind of that conclusion of all of these renter friendly makeovers. Ultimately, I think all of them were worth it. I wish I was smarter or knew things going into them about how to do it better, like with the molding, but I'm glad that I made this house feel like our home for while we lived there. It was definitely worth it, definitely worth the effort. It was a little stressful undoing it all on such short notice, but it was so worth it. Even that little half bath downstairs just felt so like like a hospital bathroom like there was no personality no love in it and like i know it's kind of silly to say that for a bathroom but i'm so glad we took the time to personalize the home as best as we could and i will say i know a lot of you guys don't think painting and putting things in the walls like is very renter friendly that was well within the means of our lease agreement with this company we were allowed to do these things as long as we returned them to their state now i have lived places where that is explicitly not allowed in the leasing contract they tell me that you cannot put certain things in the wall you cannot paint the walls and so obviously respect the lease agreement review that before you do any of these projects but overall i think it worked out great in this home and it was well worth it to customize it like that now we are moving out and we are moving into a home hopefully soon that we will own so we don't have to follow renter friendly rules and all of that stuff so subscribe and stay tuned for all of that stuff coming your way soon i cannot wait to share all of the like serious renovations and diys and things that we're actually going to just own so that's a wrap on this video thanks for hanging out thanks for watching thanks for following along on our crazy time in california in the almost three years we had in this house we loved it uh i think we'll miss it right now it feels a little too stressful to say that but it was a good house for us and uh it was a good time but thank you guys for watching i will see you guys next time bye